Hi guys, I'm Wade with Cap Inc. and I'm here with Bob Slywa with Airflow Truck Company. And this is Jeremy Singley with Jeremy Singley Industrial Designs. And we're here to talk about the new Airflow truck that you can see right here behind us. And to get started, I'm going to throw the ball over here to Bob. When I first parked this truck here, and it was a work truck um, previous to, to us retrofitting it, um, the computer said 6.6 .6 miles per gallon. So we're looking to do with this new truck here um, on relatively light loads, but full trailer loads, going coast to coast, close to 15 miles per gallon, if we can do that. Um, so I probably sent Jeremy some images, um, just an email of kind of what I was looking at. And we kind of went back and forth over the telephone, tried to figure out what exactly um, to do. Yeah. Um, these things are so complicated, you can't really explain everything over the telephone. Um, so I did have a uh, 2007 version of SolidWorks myself, uh, and Jeremy would send me a file, and I could be able to see it. And then I'd, I'd, I'd take one little facet of it and said, we should probably tweak this aspect of it. So he would tweak it and send me the file back. A lot of stuff we manually did, if I recall. I'd make a drawing of some complicated little thing, and, and I'd, I'd just scan it in my scanner and email him that, that, photo, that, 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 that rendering, basically, and he'd convert that into SolidWorks. So the way it played out was I would send a picture, a, a file, or, or a, uh, a picture back to Bob, and he would make suggestions as far as you know, the different aerodynamic shapes and contours. And there's a lot of guesswork, you know, trying to figure out what Bob wants and then getting, you know, having Bob say, no, that ain't it, and back and forth. But eventually we got something we were both happy with. And the first big plus was I did a rendering of that final design. And Bob put it on his website. And for a long time, you were getting how many hits? Oh, we were getting astronomical. It was almost viral that we were getting hits yeah, on the website it, when it first came out. In fact, for quite a while, uh, if you Google imaged aerodynamic tractor trailer truck, that image came up first. Yep. And that, I think, was big in getting all the sponsors on board to uh, the, uh, contributed a lot of the components to this truck. Uh, so that was one. And two was, well, let me, let me just sure. run you through the process. I, this is a 30-second scale model toy truck. And it's like, I don't know, what was it, like 15 bucks? Amazing. The oh. detail is very intricate. I mean, the, the engine's detail. in there. <laughs> you, can, you can open the doors. You can get inside the steering wheel. This truck is basically the truck that we're converting. Mm -hmm. It's a T2000 Kenworth. So we use that as one of the most aerodynamic foundations that we could use to, to modify and retrofit this truck in, into kind of morph it into the airflow truck or as right. close as we could get. Basically threw that away to begin with. And uh, you're dealing from the, uh, the frame out front, right? Drop the radiator. Yep. Um, so I scanned this in to SolidWorks or had a, uh, a firm scan it. And I had to do some modeling on it to make it right. And then I ran a a flow analysis on it. And the purpose of that was to see if we were uh, doing our homework right. Because we know the uh, coefficient of drag of this, this truck, which is about just a little over 0.6, I think. It's published. In other words, it's published. So we ran it, and we got all the same. It's, we, got, we, we got everything right. So we knew we were doing it right. So that was a great baseline foundation. Right. Then we took Bob's truck, which was all done seat of the pants, according to what Bob thought was good aerodynamics and got some great numbers. Uh, just, in fact, I don't think I can, if, as far as building a truck on a conventional platform um, without changing the actual frame of the truck, I think you did as good as can be done, just using intuition. But, but the, the neat thing is that now, as he uh, goes forward from here, uh, he can continue to improve it, and we can, we can check it and save some time there. Like uh, I think we're going to see. I, I did run this this uh, front end, this truck as it is now, on the trailer which is outside, all as it is now, and uh, got some good numbers. But we're seeing some places we could improve, and we'll probably work on that sometime in the future. Okay, so anyway, this is what I ended up trial and error. This guy. That's your basic bullet train truck. And the thing I learned was it's very important to design the whole truck as a unit because you need to get, you need to fill in back here because the, the road, the road underneath the truck is blocking the air from 
filling in, in where the biggest vacuum is because the air on the top, the air can come. I'm going to get rid of this guy. On the top, the air can come over the top and around the sides and fill in here. On the bottom, it can't come underneath and up because the road is there. So it was a big effort to, uh, to fill this in, and it took a lot of um, trial and error to get these shapes. And by the way, this truck is going to have these features in the future. It needs to get on the road and get out there, but Bob will be back in the shop. Uh, you'll notice that you, there's no gap between the tractor and the trailer. Normally, well, where's this other guy? I think Bob just set it down. There yeah. we go. This has the same fifth wheel. Normally, you've got that. And there's a there's huge... gap right here between the... This, that gap in there. the cab in the front of the trailer. There's a huge vortex that runs around in there. Tremendous and, vortices, yeah. And then, uh, of course, in the back, you've got giant suction from the vacuum that forms behind the trailer. And many, many companies and research institutes have tried to find a gap sealer that does that. And by the way, this, we're not showing how this gap sealer actually works because this, this can't turn. This is the deployed state. <laughs> yeah. This is the deployed state. All the, the aerodynamic devices below the skirts are deployed because you wouldn't have this low here. The trailer could probably be that way with some TPO material, but this assumes that the, that the gap sealer is completely deployed that way. Right. Just, just because we couldn't make a model with and without it. And then back here, this is called a boat tail. And that, that brings you, helps the air to close in the back. On this particular design, it closes almost perfectly. Um, probably the one that'll go on this rig will be a little more geometric and simpler. Um, and again, you have, to, you have to be able to, well, this has to be fairly lightweight, not too expensive. And the driver has can only, to- Can only be four foot long. Can only be four foot long. Law, yeah. And the driver has to be able to get it out of the way conveniently and quickly. And, he's, close the doors. and he still has to be able to get back to the, to the loading dock without any interference. And uh, NASA and the consortiums and the various companies have all tried to do these things. Uh, I know NASA crushed a whole bunch of gap sealers. <laughs> so uh, on the other hand, Bob's a, Bob's a trucker. So he, he's got a, a, a real world feel, real real world feel yeah. for it, um, a more prosaic. Uh, Outlook and the ideas that we've been talking about that he's been sharing with me, uh, I think are probably going to have a much better chance of success. Well, I think it's very neat as a Cap Inc. employee to, to be able to witness something like this where you got Bob who had an idea that was percolating in his head for 20 years, plus, 30 years. 30 years <laughs> and he knows what he wants to do and he can do it physically and he makes his changes here in the shop and then somehow or another through some relationship building he starts a relationship with Jeremy who's utilizing SOLIDWORKS tools with the CAD tools and the simulation tools. And Jeremy kind of brings it to life in a virtual way and is able to make some changes and kind of help with which direction it's going to go. And if we do this, we're going to get some better results. And I think it's just neat to see that collaboration. And that's one of the great things about being a Cap Inc. employee and a salesperson of SOLIDWORKS products to, to go out and visit folks like you guys that are much smarter than I am. It's just, it's just really... It's, it's great to witness this. Yep. So and I'm glad to share it with everybody. And it's all on a shoestring. This isn't a billion dollar truck. <laughs> no. Here's a pretty cool feature, Melinda, that I want you to see. Watch right below the door. And two quick snaps and you're in the truck. No seat, so I'm limited. I guess I could drive and stand up. Awesome.